In this lecture, we will review the world's water resources. Water is plentiful. However, it's not necessarily distributed evenly, so that some areas have limited water supplies and some areas have extensive water supplies. Climate change and population patterns put additional strain on water supplies and can even have political and military consequences. After reviewing this lecture, you should be able to identify the major sources of water on planet Earth, identify some of the, of the locations where water shortages are most likely to occur, understand what groundwater is and how it's replenished and protected, and the distribution of water in Earth's various storage compartments. Water is essential for life. It is the medium in which all living processes occur. Water dissolves nutrients and distributes them to cells, regulates body temperature, supports cells, and removes waste products. You are 60% water. You could survive for weeks without food, but only a few days without water. Worsening water shortages worry cities and farmers worldwide. In India's Ganges Valley Plain, home to half a billion people, groundwater levels have declined some 30 centimeters in just a decade. China, Syria, Iraq, and other countries face increasing water shortages as well. Globally, military analysts expect that water shortages will increasingly become the focus of wars and refugee crises. Understanding how these resources are distributed and why they are changing is the first step towards finding better strategies to protect this precious resource. Conserving water resources, as California is trying to do, doesn't need to mean disaster. As in California, it may mean fewer European-style lawns in the desert. It means better management of resources, and it means adjusting expectations to what the land can support. Aquifers that provided most of the total withdrawals for irrigation, public supply, and self-supplied industrial water uses in the United States during 2000 is shown in this figure. The High Plains Aquifer, also called the Ogallala Aquifer, and California's Central Valley Aquifer have very high daily water withdrawals. Withdrawals are reducing water storage in many of the world's most important aquifers, including those in politically tense regions. This figure shows trends in groundwater storage from 2003 to 2013 in millimeters of water per year. Note that California's Central Valley, India, China, and the Middle East show extensive water withdrawals, while some areas show increased water storage. These data are from NASA's Gravity Recovery and Climate Experiment, GRACE, satellites, which measure changes in the mass, that is the water content, of the land surface. This figure shows total water withdrawals around the year 2000 in millimeters per year, based on an average from 1998 to 2002. One millimeter is equal to one liter of water per square meter. Resolution is 0.5 inches longitude by 0.5 inches latitude, which is equivalent to about 55 kilometers by 55 kilometers at the equator. Certain parts of the United States, Europe, the Middle East, India, and China show significant water withdrawals. These data are computed by the global freshwater model Water Gap. So how does the hydrologic cycle redistribute water? Well, solar energy constantly evaporates water, and evaporated water condenses to liquid. That's, that is rain or fog or dew or solid snow and ice when it's cool. The general term for falling liquid or solid water is precipitation, and most water precipitates somewhere distant from where it evaporated. Most snowfall on the Sierra Nevada, for example, comes from evaporation over the Pacific Ocean. These familiar processes supply nearly all of the water that keeps us and our ecosystems alive. Some 500,000 cubic kilometers evaporate from the ocean every year. Of this, 90% falls back on you know, into the ocean, but some 40,000 uh, 
cubic kilometers of moisture drifts over land where it falls along with some 72,000 uh, cubic kilometers of water evaporated from lakes and rivers and plants. Plants play a major role in this process. They take up moisture and release water vapor from leaf pores in a process known as transpiration. The term evapotranspiration refers to the combined processes of evaporation and transpiration. Both evaporation and transpiration are much more active in hot climates than in cool climates. More solar energy causes more evaporation and plants must transpire faster to avoid baking in the heat. Solar energy drives the cycle of water evaporation, transport, and precipitation. Both solar energy and water that can be evaporated are unevenly distributed around the globe. Consequently, water resources are unevenly distributed. At Inquique in the Chilean desert, for instance, no rain has fallen in recorded history. At the other end of the scale, the Himalayan town of Cherapunji, India, reported 26.5 meters of rain, that's 86.8 feet, in 1860. In general, water availability is very high near the equator, as in South America, Africa, and Southeast Asia, where solar intensity and evapotranspiration rates are high. Mountainous regions near coasts, such as the Pacific coast of North America, also capture moisture, as in the Sierra Nevada. The leeward or downwind side of mountains tend to be depleted of moisture. In Hawaii, the windward side of Mount Wailei has an annual rainfall around 1,200 centimeters or 460 inches. The leeward side, only a few kilometers away, has an average yearly rainfall of only 46 centimeters or 18 inches. Deserts occur on every continent just outside the tropics. Think of the Sahara, the Namib, the Gobi, the Sonoran, and others. Here, high-pressure weather systems tend to maintain clear, dry climates. Rainfall is also slight near the poles, another high-pressure region. Water availability often varies seasonally. India's monsoon climate, for example, has intense drought most of the year and intense rainfall at the end of summer. Unusually heavy monsoons can cause floods and devastation. Unusually light monsoons can spell disaster. For farmers. In this figure, we see annual average precipitation worldwide in millimeters. Note that wet areas that support tropical rainforests occur along the equator, while major world deserts occur in zones of dry, descending air between 20 degrees and 40 degrees north and south latitude. In this figure, we see total renewable freshwater resources of the world in millimeters per year. One millimeter is equivalent to one liter of water every square meter. This is based on long-term averages for the years 1961 to 1990. Resolution is 0.5 degrees longitude by 0.5 degrees latitude or 55 kilometers by 55 kilometers at the equator. This was computed by the Global Freshwater Model Water Gap. The distribution of water often is described in terms of interacting compartments in which water resides, sometimes briefly and other times for eons. The length of time water typically stays in a compartment is its resonance time. On average, a water molecule stays in the ocean for about 3,000 years, for example, before it evaporates and starts through the hydrologic cycle again. Nearly all of the world's water is in the oceans. Oceans play a crucial role in moderating the Earth's temperature, and over 90% of the world's living biomass is contained in the oceans. What we mainly need, though, is fresh water. Amazingly, only 0.02% of the world's water is in a form accessible to us and to other organisms that rely on fresh water. Of the 2.4% of all water that is fresh, nearly 90% of that is tied up in glaciers, ice caps, and snowfields. Although most of this ice is located in Antarctica, 
Greenland, and the floating ice caps of the Arctic, alpine glaciers and snowfields supply water to billions of people. The winter snowpack on the eastern slope of the Rocky Mountains, for example, provides 75% of the flow of the Colorado River. Drought conditions already have reduced snowfall and runoff in the western United States, and global warming is projected to cause even further declines. Climate change is shrinking glaciers and snowfields nearly everywhere. In Asia, the Tibetan glaciers uh, that are the sources of six of the world's largest rivers and supply drinking water for three billion people are shrinking rapidly. There are warnings that these glaciers could vanish in a few decades, which would bring enormous suffering and economic losses to the continent. Glaciers and snowfields provide of the, <clears throat> provide much of the water in which billions of people rely, as we've mentioned. This figure shows the snowpack in the Western Rocky Mountains, which provides 75% of the annual flow of the Colorado River. Originating as precipitation that percolates into layers of soil and rock, groundwater makes up the largest component I'm sorry, the largest compartment of liquid fresh water. The groundwater within one kilometers of the surface is more than 100 times the volume of all the freshwater lakes, rivers, and reservoirs combined. Plants get moisture from a relatively shallow layer of soil containing both air and water known as the zone of aeration. Depending on rainfall amount, soil type, and surface topography, the zone of aeration may be a few centimeters or many meters deep. Lower soil layers, where all soil pores are filled with water, make up the zone of saturation, the source of water in most wells. The top of this zone is the water table. The capillary fringe is the zone where capillary action draws water up from the saturated zone to partially fill soil pores. Geologic layers that contain water are known as aquifers. Aquifers may consist of porous layers of sand or gravel or of cracked or porous rock. Below an aquifer, relatively impermeable layers of rock or clay that we term confining beds keep water from seeping out at the bottom. Instead, water seeps more or less horizontally through the porous layer. Depending on geology, it can take from a few hours to several years for water to move a few hundred meters through an aquifer. If impermeable layers lie above an aquifer, pressure can develop within the water-bearing layer. Pressure in the aquifer can make well water flow, uh, flow freely at the surface. These free-flowing wells and springs are known as artesian wells or artesian springs. Areas where surface water filters into an aquifer are recharge zones. Most aquifers recharge extremely slowly, and road and house construction of water <clears throat> or water use at the surface can further slow recharge rates. Contaminants can also enter aquifers through these recharge zones. Urban or agricultural runoff in recharge zones is often a serious problem. The people who don't have access to clean water <clears throat> generally depend on groundwater for drinking and other uses. Every year, 700 cubic kilometers are withdrawn by humans, mostly from shallow, but unfortunately easily polluted aquifers. Fresh, flowing surface water is one of our most precious resources. Rivers contain a relatively small amount of water at any one time. Most rivers would begin to dry up in weeks or days if they were not constantly replenished by precipitation, snow belt, or groundwater seepage. We compare the size of rivers in terms of discharge, or the amount of water that passes a fixed point in a given amount of time. This is usually expressed as liters or cubic feet of water per second. The 16 largest rivers in the world carry nearly half of all surface water on the earth, and a large fraction of that occurs in a single river, the Amazon which carries nearly as much water as the next seven biggest rivers together. Lakes contain nearly 100 times as much water as all rivers and streams combined, but 
Much of this water is in a few of the world's largest lakes. Lake Bacal in Siberia, the Great Lakes of North America, the Great Rift Lakes of Africa, and a few other lakes contain vast amounts of water. Worldwide, lakes are almost as important as rivers in terms of water supplies, food, transportation, and settlement. Wetlands, that is bogs, swamps, and wet meadows and marshes, also play a vital but often unappreciated role in the hydrologic cycle. They provide storage for rainfall and flood events and also provide filtration that improves water quality. The atmosphere is one of the smallest water storage compartments and contains only 0.001% of the total water supply. But it is this important mechanism that redistributes water around the world. An individual water molecule resides in the atmosphere for only about 10 days on average. Some water evaporates and falls within hours. Water can also travel halfway around the world before it falls, replenishing streams and aquifers on land. This concludes our lecture for today. And please let me know if you have any questions when we meet again in class.